the years worth of training initiated to the sixth level or grand druid position of witchcraft, I sat on a council of 13 people that take orders only from the Rothschild Tribunal in London, which they claim they take their orders directly from Lucifer. And that's why they reside. Somebody's asking me if some of the Rothschilds live in California. Not those directly related to the tribunal. They won't leave England. Some live in France, but they always come over to England because they believe that England is the place that Lucifer is most fluent and can speak to them more in person than he could anywhere else. And from talking to Christians in England, they estimate there's only 2% of the population are Christians in the uh, Great Britain country. So uh, they have quite a fluent time over there. In fact, some friends of mine just brought pictures back of where they're building homes with broomstick poles coming out of the chimney for the witch spirits to land on to bless their homes. These aren't ignorant people. These are the new million dollar mansions that are going in. Not just a superstition. The country has really gone back to witchcraft. It was originally total witchcraft. So uh, this is the atmosphere I came out of. I was saved in Labor Day at 72 in San Antonio to a movie, The Crossing the Switchblade, a uh, coffee house ministry that belonged to a Baptist church there, and then later delivered through that Baptist church. I've been ministering with people in the occult, and uh, in the last year, my main ministry has been to Christians playing with the occult. And uh, we're going to demonstrate that in a minute here. But uh, this is what our ministry outlook has been. We just, in uh, September, went to Minneapolis, St. Paul area, which is where the occult owns one of their Bible colleges, their printing company, we well and, uh, through Christians Giving. We bought 10,000 of the Broken Cross to distribute free there. We went there and we worked for two weeks there through the state fair and other things that was going on and had a hotline set up for them to call in and they knew we were coming and they canceled their convention and it was booked close to a half a million people were scheduled to appear at their convention and they can't cost them thousands and thousands of dollars. And the story that the best we could get was they were too afraid that this broken cross would get in their hands since it has been the leading instrument for stopping people in joining and getting those that were in. And uh, they called the convention the Aquarian Arts Festival completely off. First time it's been done so in years. And uh, we're going back there. In fact, Friday and Saturday, we're going back for five meetings being a prayer force. The people who put the uh, second $100,000 on my head came out of Minneapolis because of the last time we were up there. So uh, be in prayer for my safety while we're up there. I would really appreciate your prayer. It does kind of hairy the last time we were up there. But this is my background, and uh, I want to say one thing before we start here for those that are newcomers. The organization that I came out of is a cult in religion, not in purpose. Its purpose is political and financial power, complete world rule through finance, which they believe would control the political atmosphere. It's been called by many people the Illuminati, which is called Mariah. In the United States, it's called the Council of Foreign Relations. It has many, many names wherever you go. I met Dr. Rasmussen because he had come across it through the Masons. I've met people who have come across it through political things, through financial and banking things. And wherever people have seen it, they have thought that's exactly what it was. It was either in one of those realms. I came out of a realm where I knew better. I came off of a council that was in charge of dishing money out and political orders. In my area, I had 5,000 COVID. That meant I had 65,000 priests and priestesses. That wasn't the congregation. That was just the ministers. I saw a, a movie by Hal Lindsey on the occult where he said he believed there were 5,000 witches in the United States. There are 25,000 witches in Los Angeles City alone. So he was way under, way under short. From the statistics that we are seeing right now, it is the fastest growing religion in the United States and definitely in the world. And the reason it is doing this is because it has its financial power, and it's because the Christians, most of them, do not know their word, and therefore are afraid of it, and therefore do not witness to the people that are in it. And uh, we have not had much success in the last couple of years because they have stepped up the death threats within the occult for people leaving. It's like a Berlin Wall. And the people were afraid to come out when we were there. We were in a meeting one night where we had over... 5,000 people in one meeting. In that meeting, 1,500 of them were initiated priests and priestesses of witchcraft that had attended the meeting. And hundreds came up and told ministers, myself and my wife later, they would come out if we could guarantee them a safe place to go until they were strong enough to be on their own. We didn't have such a place. We're trying to prepare such a place now. 
And if you're interested in helping in such a place, get with Dr. Rasmussen when he comes back from this trip. Communicate with him your bazaar on this, since he will be one of the few people who will know where this place is and be able to send people to it. It will be completely hidden and secret. We had one once before in Phoenix, and three people were killed there one night because some pastors interfered with the security of the place, and uh, the occult was watching, and they came in and machine gunned to death three girls and wounded the worker. The girls were ages 15 to 18. They do not play games, and this is why we tell the young people, don't go, because they'll tell you to come in, it's nice, it's loving, it's a brotherhood, and you get in, and once you're initiated, you find out, It'll cost them $10,000 if you try to leave, but they'll send it. That's the minimum bounty they put on anybody's head getting out, and they don't care how young they are. So it's not a game. It's a real world out there. So uh, that's some quick background, a few words to the young people, how this takes like we did this morning, the questions and answers. Many of you were here, and I know you have questions and answers from this morning's service. Okay, since you asked that question, I wanted to do something before I forgot. If you will take out some pencil and paper, a few of you, I'm going to give you some facts. Now, we hear a lot of, of things rolled out on um, things, but I want to give you facts so that when you come up to somebody, especially just young people pulling with rock music, you'll have some facts. Now, I want to say one thing before we get started. Young people have been running all over saying hi, they're friendly to me. They're going to want to lynch me when this is over. But young pe- people, you'll just have to understand that I came out of a world that I saw something you don't see when you turn on the radio. Parents, if you're letting to compromise with your young people, them having rock music in your home, which you as Christian parents own and are responsible to the Lord for, then you're wrong. And I recommend you go home right now and throw it in the trash can immediately. And this is the reason why. You see groups up on the television and on the, you hear them on the radio and in concert and stuff. And, you know, you don't see the behind thing. Now, here's one fact. Zodiac Productions, the leading Texas publication. It's changed its name now, but it was Zodiac Productions when I was with it. I was supposedly the owner of it. The occult owned it. And it was the leading source of concerts in Texas. Its office was in San Antonio. Because I was supposedly the owner, I met most of the groups in existence then. There are a few that have come out since then, but it's still the same type of thing. Almost all of them believe openly in the occult in one way or the other. Most are into Satanism. Now, how many Christians and young people remember from Billy Jack, One Tin Soldier, the song? A few of you? Okay. The group you heard on the radio called Original Cat. They always said it was done by the Original Cat. The name of the group that was the Original Cat is Coven. It was led by Tom Laughlin's daughter. Tom Laughlin played Billy Jack, his wife. His son, David, who produced it, and both his daughters are into Satanism. In fact, they produced the only eight-track out on a complete Satanist step-by-step ceremony done by COVID. And that's the group who did One Ten Soldier. And I've seen all of the movies except the new one that's coming out. And every one of the Billy Jack movies are anti-Christian, pro-occult. The trial of Billy Jack dealt with demons and had more... Ceremonies of witchcraft and Satanism in, in it than it had anything about a trial of Billy Jack. And it was constant step by step ceremonies. It was reincarnation. Familiar spirits entered his body in the first Billy Jack and spoke through him, if you remember. Over and over it came through. Now that's one group. Rolling Stone. Mick Jagger has told openly, over and over on television, I don't know where our Christian young people were when it was going on, that when he was in jail before the Stones was ever formed, he sold his soul to the devil. That's impossible, but he did it anyway. He sold his soul to the devil to become the leading rock group in the nation, plus get out of prison. He is the leading rock group in the nation, in the world. He has wrote songs praising the devil. And I know the devil gave it to him because the devil always thinks on himself. And in one song that Jagger wrote, he said, it's not that I fool you who I am. Everybody knows who the devil is. It's the nature of my game that's confusing you. And this is why it is with Satan. See, we've got a little set of rules that Satan's supposed to obey, but he don't obey us. It's like the Illuminati. They own countries. They don't pick sides in a war. They cause a war and put both countries against each other, even though both countries belong to them. They don't have sides. They have a purpose. Satan has every religion except that which is under the blood of Jesus. That's where the confusion of the game is. We try to rationalize things good or bad, and we can't do that. 
we rationalize things, Jesus or the devil. That's where you draw the line. But stagger it over and over, and that goes with rock music too. Don't try to rationalize it good or bad. It's bad. Now, I want to give you an incident that will kind of sum it up. I did meet most of them. Most of them were in the occult, but most of them were on drugs. Now, I want to say something real quick here. How many remember a group called Bloodstone, or Blood Rock, I think it was? DOA, the song DOA. They did this song while they were on acid. They got the words. I talked with a guy. He said a demon. Well, he didn't call it a demon. He called it the spirit of this girl that he knew that had died in a car accident. It was a demon impersonating the girl. Appeared to him and gave him during this acid trip the notes, the words, and everything. They filed it with a copyright lawyer. The day after the copyright lawyer filed it, Another group came in that was well known at that time and filed the same song, note for note, word for word. And when I was in the occult, I thought it was interesting enough to check it up because I wrote for an occult newspaper and I put the story in the paper. They got it the same way. On an acid trip, the same night, from a demon in a, imitating a spirit of somebody they had known that had died. Most rock musicians get their music while on drugs or from spirit guides, which are demons. That's what the, your young people are buying and paying for. Now, I'll give you something supernatural you can file away if you don't want to receive it or take it home and, and get in the Word and see if it's possible. When witches write a book, they cast a spell over the book so it'll sell. And they order a demon to go into every copy that comes off the press. So when you own a book on witchcraft, you have a demon residing in your home free of charge. The musicians who do the music that are in witchcraft do the same things to the record album. The same thing. So when you see that friendly little album spinning on your thing, ask yourself, was the musician a witch? Did he cast a spell over the album that the devil would have a pact in my home because I owned the record? There's more to it than records and books. And this morning, you remember, I gave the text and I meant to get into this thing because it fit the text. Your warfare is not physical, it's spiritual. And every Christian should memorize Ephesians 6.12 and stand on it. Look beyond what you see with these and look and know that the devil has got, what, thousands and thousands of years of experience and unless we think it's the mind of Christ, he's going to walk all over us. And that's why you stay under the blood. A young man came up and asked me today, can a witch cast a spell on a Christian? You can cast it on any Christian that's not living the life. If you want to fence straddle, you're a wide open target for any witch in the world. If you want to stay under the blood and you want to walk the line and, and be within the word and within the spirit of God, and wear the full armor of God, then you're going to be fine. Well, I think all of us know what it means when we come to church and sit in the service and then go out and live like the devil all week long and think we're immune to anything of the devil. If you're going to live in his territory, he's going to live in yours. And that includes the rock music. I go along on that question, but I cannot miss the rock music. The main reason that young people go into witchcraft today is through the music. As I've told people, rock music didn't come out with Elvis Presley. It's thousands of years old. If you take it away, witches can't do witchcraft. They can't function without the music. It's a third of their power. You think about it. Many modern churches know who their source of power is anyway. Yeah. You would. You would. All right. The question was, the question was this morning, that I mentioned the chart that I had seen this morning, or I mentioned this morning, that I had seen... And when I saw the chart, it was August the 1st, 1972, for those that want to write it down, and I was saved in Labor Day, just shortly before I was saved. It was one of the main reasons I got saved. I wanted out after I saw the chart. The chart was a complete timetable that gave the Illuminati complete world control minus China. I want to specify that. Minus China in eight years. The reason minus China, they plan on taking China completely out. It's too unruly to try and rule. They plan on wiping it up. And so I'll let that settle with you for a minute. And it gave him complete world control and religious control in eight years. Now, the question was, what did the energy crisis and what did Jimmy Carter have to do with it? Okay. I want to ask the question before I answer that. How many here honestly believe, if you don't believe now, this counts if you believe during the election time, that Jimmy Carter is a Christian president or is a Christian, period? Huh? I mean, any time from during the time he was running as candidate till now, if any time during that time you thought he was a Christian, maybe voted for him because he was a Christian. Okay. See, we have some intelligent people here. <laughs> I didn't mean it the way it came out. But it's, it's simply the reason that I got saved was because of Jimmy Carter. You don't sit at a table remembering Bible that you were taught when you were a young person and have people come in with a letter from the Rothschild signed with their crest saying, we have a man and name him that will be the world ruler 
and stay a witch. And the name was Jimmy Carter. I want you to start looking at, of course, you got to accept and throw away half of what you see on the television news today. I recommended to Christians in the last year that they buy a shortwave receiver and receive news broadcast throughout the world. You find out in 30 days you missed two-thirds of what really happened. But uh, and you also find out the Lord's really close after listening to it for about a month. But uh, the energy crisis is going to be the reason for the war, for the Third World War. It is their main objective. They believe through the energy crisis they will gain control of the world. That's what they've been waiting on. And if you believe there's an energy crisis, then you're dumber than some of the witches that are still witches. Yeah. The Church of Scientology was formed by a witchcraft coven in California originally. That its leader came from England, on express orders of the Rothschild. Uh, there are a few religions we can't prove physically belong to the organization, but we have seen funding go their way. Now, as I have done quite a few bit of investigation since I was saved because of facts I heard when I was in witchcraft, don't just look at obscene religions like Scientology, Jehovah Witness, Mormonism. Look at even Christian churches within Bible-believing denomination. There was a couple, quote, Jesus people, garbage churches, that began a few years ago in L.A., Costa Mesa, and so on. They had a few hundred kids. All of a sudden, the pastors move in the half a million dollar home, and the churches are taking their offerings out in armored cars. Now, where did they get the funds to buy a two million dollar building overnight? They were preaching gospel. Now they're preaching trash. One of them is responsible for the so-called Jesus rock that has ruined half of the good Christian young people today. Now, I never have to speak against anything unless I go check it out. And I went down to Costa Mesa, and I saw something that bordered witchcraft on their open concert night at Calvary Chapel on Saturday night. There were people shoving and beating on each other just to get a seat in that place. And they turned hundreds away. Nothing was mentioned about Jesus, and a homosexual was leading the service. And you had to have been blind not to see it. And it was a total acid rock type concert in the name of Jesus. Now, that's the same group that puts out all your love song albums and, and all this stuff that people listen to. So, I try to warn as I go along things that we have found out. It's up to Christians. It's like Paul said, if you think meat is not a sin, eat it. If you think it is, don't eat it. And if you want to buy what I'm saying, I think your walk will get a little stronger if you want to keep on listening to stuff. I can look at Christians and tell how strong they are in the Lord and where they're walking with him by the type of music they're listening to. And then I, I'm this way. If I find something in my life that I don't want to give up, I'll usually give it up because, you know, it's, just, it's that simple. When you don't want to give something up, the devil's usually trying to get you to hang on to it. Do I subscribe to Oral Roberts being a member of Witchcraft? Oral Roberts, if you'll check into it, used to, and this is fact, it's fact you can find in books. Before he ever considered laying hands on the sick, that they would recover, a Cherokee medium told him that he could do it. And he used to attend her seances regularly, okay? What he is now, I can't say. I only know the fact of what he was. I was once a witch, so, you know, he could be a Christian. I don't know. I have no idea. Uh, I know that he's gotten out of more of the Pentecostal charismatic and become more scriptural based on the Bible than on feeling now than he used to be. And I know many ministers that were once witchcraft ministers under the guise of Christians that had just changed mid-river and became Christians. But they, rather than ruin their ministry, they've never told anybody. And there are a few that I know that used to be on the payroll of the Illuminati that are now Christians. So I don't know. Yeah. No. All right, question is, can a demon possess a Christian? No. Can a demon influence a Christian? Yes. Yes. I was saved, born again, two weeks, and trying desperately to make it. Before the other ministers in the Baptist church I was at decided that I was never going to make it unless they got what I had invited in me in witchcraft out of me because it was still there. It had lost control before I couldn't do anything it didn't want me to do. But from the time I accepted Jesus, that broke the control. But it had influence in my life still that had to go. And for those that have been on drugs and those that have been in the occult, and there have been a few that have come up and told me so, They'll, they'll probably bear witness that they have. This is what I was talking about earlier, the, the withdrawal. A lot of it went when I went through the occult withdrawal, which is worse than drug withdrawal. It is tremendously worse. A person that has come out of witchcraft, that has been in it strongly, and demon worship in particular, can be one minute just sitting there really talking about the Lord, holding scripture, and the next minute knocking anybody down between you and the door. 
I've seen them claw up the wall with their bare fingers trying to claw out of the room they were going through a draw in just to get out because the force on the other side was calling them back to them, the other witches. This is what they do first. Then if they can't get you back, then they try and kill you supernaturally. That don't work on a Christian, so they try and... It's really funny. Most witches had given up the aspect of trying to kill me supernaturally shortly after I was saved. This is how they tried first. I went to Minneapolis, and they hadn't got the message, evidently. So they started casting spells, which didn't work at all, but you could fill them in the air. And then, when they found out that didn't work after a week, then they took the boat. But they hadn't got the message yet. But they're slowly learning they can't cast on a Christian if the Christian is sold out. I'm sure a few people know there's those that have Jesus as Savior, and then there's those that have Jesus as Lord. Yes. My wife was saved in a meeting a few years after I was saved, and her title was Lady Diana. That was her witch name. She was the state high priestess. She ruled everything in the state of Ohio that was in witchcraft. She was also the witch queen of one of the denominational brotherhood, the Watchers. On a scale in this country of maybe 1 to 25, she was probably the 10 most powerful witch in the United States for my salvation. And she has close to $50,000 on her head because she'd come out, not because she married me, just because she got saved. And we took her into a rehabilitation ministry, and then later we started dating and were married and so on. But uh, she does a fine ministry. Right now she's just about ready to deliver a baby. She thinks she might even have it today. So uh, she's not exactly ministering lately. Yeah. No. Okay. Uh, let me take about five minutes here. The question is, is human sacrifice practiced in witchcraft? I have to be kind of careful since a police officer is present here without incriminating myself or something. But uh, the Broken Cross was written by myself and Jack Chick. When it was reproduced, the guy who was doing the wording in the book, you know, writing our story for him out, changed a few words. He thought we're stronger. He changed the word witchcraft to Satanism a couple places, and he changed the word Lucifer to Satan. That messed up the book. We didn't catch it until just recently, all these years. I've been reading it, just kind of skipping over it, because it means the same thing in my mind. But when a witch who doesn't believe in Satan reads it, it blows the whole thing. Since it wasn't written on Satanism, it was written on witchcraft. So the next printing coming out, they're changing the words back the way they're supposed to be. Satanism practices a form of, of sacrifice in some groups. Witches practice it more. To the everyday witch, that's a lie, I'm telling you. There's a few witches here in the congregation tonight that I know. Yeah. But there's a few here also that are in the human sacrifice, and they know I'm not lying. And when you get up into a higher level, fourth, fifth, or sixth, you find out that the power rests with blood sacrifice. You become what is called a human talent. In other words, you are proving to Satan through the blood and the death of this person that you are sold totally out to him, although they don't believe in Satan. You're proving it to Lucifer. I always, the things that always puzzled me was if we were worshiping a God of love, peace, and joy, why were we killing somebody to worship him? It was one of the things I could never understand. But uh, this is the, the thing that goes on. One of the books most interesting that proves it, I'm saying this for witches that are present, not the Christians, leave it alone is the Aleister Crowley Library, where he was involved in human sacrifice, and he was a master magician or witch, or wizard, whatever term they want to use. So it does go on. And in fact, to become a six-level witch, you must perform it. It's just like when they, they tell, now this is for the women, not the men, when they tell the young girls getting into witchcraft that homosexuality has nothing to do with witchcraft. In order to become a high priest, the girl must be bisexual. She must perform a bisexual act. So see, every level you go to, they tell you a different story. And they tell you the people below aren't ready to receive it yet. And so every step you go up the ladder, everything you've been told before is a lie, and all of a sudden you learn new truth. The only type of witches that are kind of ignorant, there are a couple of them here today, are the self-proclaimed witches. The ones who are practicing outside the organization on their own. And they think they know it all, she says. They'll find out one of these days when an enforcer comes from the organization and tells them you either join or you die then they'll find out it's not a game anymore. See, it's just like the mafia. You don't function on anything else. Let's take a few new back here in the blue shirt. What? Oh, I think it started in the garden, since the main lie of witchcraft is God's self, and that's the lie that Lucifer or Satan gave Adam and Eve in the garden. Uh, we can find it starting in uh, before the flood and going on through. Uh, of course, uh, we had uh, uh, Neiman, who hunted the souls of man, who sacrificed babies. Uh, I want to say one thing since you brought that up. Astrology comes from Babylon. The high priest 
of Babylon were called the Chaldeans, and they invented astrology. It is the cornerstone of witchcraft spell casting. If you take astrology away, witches can't cast spells. And the 18th chapter of Deuteronomy lists the death sentences that the Jews used to have on them for doing things and following the stars is one. So when somebody comes up and says, what sign are you, say the sign of the cross. Now I'm going to tell you something. In witchcraft, they have a belief that says you are what you are when you were born. You can never change, okay? There is no miracle salvation in their doctrine. I was a Taurus, and I had all the personality of a Taurus so I was saved. I have none of that personality now. You do change through the blood. If you want to believe that you are born a certain way and have a certain personality, fine. Take the blood of Jesus Christ and you'll find out if you walk in the Bible, you'll all have one personality, that of Jesus. And his wasn't any particular sign. So uh, I get Christians who come up all the time and want me to, to give them permission, you know, by saying, yeah, astrology's all right, don't worry about it. And I, it amazes me. They'll ask me, they'll say no, they'll ask me again, they'll say no, they'll ask me again, they'll say no, and they keep on asking me and I'm still saying no. You know, and they go through it about eight times. I guess they think they'll break me down eventually. The answer is no. Astrology belongs to the devil. God doesn't use the stars. They say, what about the wise men? The wise men weren't astrologers. They were astronomers. A new star appeared. Not a new fortune under the stars. But if you take the times and the seasons and astrology away from a witch, they can't cast spells. Because spells are based upon astrology. So, if you want to read Gene Dixon or Louise Schubner in the newspaper, that's your choice. You're the one that's going to have to face our Lord for it. Yeah. I'm glad you brought that up. Okay, for the tape recorders bit and a few people who didn't hear it. Hey, is in the health business and he's in it. You know, Christians are interested, especially now, I've been noticing, in better health. And I know I'm glad this church particularly is. But he seems to attract in his business. We have a health food store. Uh, the occult. Okay, now this is why. The occults teach good health. They teach herbs. They teach um, vitamins and food, but they don't obey it. It's just like witches teach they are pagan. That's the word for the witchcraft religion. You're a pagan. Meaning you should be a country folk. And many witches have tried to move to the country, and 30 days later they're crying and moving back to the city. They can't stand the country. They can't function without people around them. They have a lot of doctrines, but they can't keep them. And the health food is one of the doctrines. It's the devil trying to counterfeit something out of the word of God that he can't keep. That's it. And I remember I was tried to do this and do that and healthy. How? I weighed 149 pounds doing $150 worth of mainline, mainline shooting speed a day. How am I healthy? They can't keep it because the drugs and the excitement of the city spoils it. They've got to have it to draw power and energy. They have to be what more demons as that people are because it's like a, a dynamo of power. It's without you know, getting into the deliverance message here, that's the quickest explanation I can know. I know that when I first got saved, I wouldn't touch the health food thing because I heard about it in the occult. So I started realizing we didn't practice it in the occult. We were just trying to counterfeit it. So I'm very, very much into it. The only problem is a lot of the good things that I have to get come from the Mormon church. So I know, and that's what you mentioned, on the Mormon. But it's, again, a counterfeit. The Mormons try to counterfeit a good, quote, Christian home life. They don't accomplish it very well, but they try to do it. So, uh, if we threw everything out that the devil tries to counterfeit, we'd never have anything. The higher up, it's one of the things I can't find out for sure where they get their money from. Okay? That's all I know. Yeah. It's a form of fortune telling. Okay? I know the leader of the occult in the United States, Gavin Frost, reads your fingernail. And I asked him one time when I was in the occult, I said, Gavin, there is no occult teaching on fingernails. He says, John, now you know, or he said, Lance, you know when you lay the cards down, and this is my way of answering, when they lay the fortune cards down, they don't read the cards, they read pictures and messages that come to them. That's why it's individual. It's not how the cards fall. The cards are just uh, a prop in the play. They still get psychic messages. It's all a form of psychic reading that they're still going to give you the definition from. He says, I just touched the finger now because the people accept something physical before they accept except something supernatural. It's just like uh, it, witchcraft has grown so much recently because now all of a sudden it's uh, telekinesis and EFT and, and clinical parapsychology names for the devil's power. So it's more acceptable now. It's still the same thing. Yes. How can you detect the witch? Hmm. Supernaturally or physically? Well, I'll tell you this. The witch will detect you if you're a Christian before you'll detect them. Okay? 
but uh, jewelry-wise, usually the five-pointed star in a circle or the six-pointed star or um, the cross with a serpent entwined about it, you see one of those get away from it. That's their little suicide group. That's the one Manson belongs to, the process. Um, the ghost head, uh, triangles. It's, it's, I have, that's one of the reasons I had one in the black world, but we didn't get it set up in time. Uh, it's jewelry. They're, in certain areas, it depends upon the leader. They make the females dress in certain sensuous ways, but out here they don't. Um, makeup on the eyes, particularly in a female. When we get a witch saved out of witchcraft, they can't touch makeup for almost three months because they're taught to use makeup for witchcraft, which is what it was invented for. And they can't touch it for three months because the spirits that came out of them try to get back into them through the makeup. So we've lost many people through it. Later, if they grow and strong in the Lord, if they want to use a little makeup, they can, but they never go back to using it the way they were taught to use it in witchcraft. Uh, supernaturally, you can detect it through the eye. Many people, after being around witches for a while, start to see the difference between witches' eyes and everybody else's eyes. It's just simply the demons that were in them, okay? And the wisdom that came with it. Yes. Oh, I'm so glad somebody brought that up. The attorney general we have now was, before Carter appointed him, and by the way, was also in charge of Carter's campaign, the man who formed the National Lobby for Gun Control. He has spent over $5 million of his own finance to ban guns in the country. Now, we're told two things on the gun control. Then I will tell you what the new gun control act is that's been written that we just got our eyes on to recently. The gun control lobbyists say, quote, we only want to ban handguns. Well, they proved that's a lie when they just tried to ban all guns and gave the National Guard the right to go in and confiscate them in, in uh, um, yeah, Massachusetts. So that was defeated. And the other was the law-abiding citizens could own it. Right now, you can own a handgun in Frisco if you get permission, right? But they're not giving permission to anybody. Now, the new Gun Control Act, and the reason I'm on this about guns is their timetable will never accept, will never work, if individuals are allowed to buy guns. This is one of their main objectives to get rid of. If you'll notice, England's a prime example of it, and that was the Rothschild's doing. The new Gun Control Act is you're only allowed to own a single shot or a double barrel or over and under shotgun, something that can't contain more than two shells at a time, shotguns only, and all ammunition and all guns must be stored at the police station or armory at dusk and must, can be picked up at dawn and all fired spent cases must be returned and be counted so that you won't be holding any ammunition back. That's Carter's new gun act. He expects to have it a law in two years. The timetable says expect to lose your gun in six to nine months in California. I have a Christian friend that is a special investigator that I just talked to recently on the phone two days ago for the Attorney General's office in California. Brown called secretly last week a special secret grand jury to consider total gun ban and confiscation in California, meaning they can come to your home without search warrant and confiscate any guns if you're on record for it. They expect to have it passed. They expect to call grand jury. Every one of the people on it, except the special investigator, that big enough information, is every time he brought in information pro-gun, they threw it out. Wouldn't even bring it to the grand jury. Once the grand jury says, yeah, we got a lot of bad stuff here, they're going to take it to the legislature in six to nine months or get your hand done. Yes. What? You passed any family? No, I haven't. In witchcraft? Not Satanist. Witchcraft. No, I haven't. Yeah. Right here. Go on. Okay. Uh, uh, quickly, how much time do we have yet? Five minutes? Okay. I will. Have you ever heard of the Aquarian Bible? I'll take first, okay? With uh, I owned the cult stores. My wife owned the cult stores. In fact, my wife, when she was saved, owned the biggest cult store in the United States, the witches called it. And it sold it. It is a Bible, suppose, a book, supposedly containing the missing first 12 years of Christ's life, and that he was not the Son of God, but he was taught in Egypt and India the practices of witchcraft, including raising himself from the dead. That's the Aquarian Gospel, that he was a master witch. The next is that I said that Mormons aren't Christians. Christian means follower of Christ. Christ said he is the only way and you must be born again. Mormons do not believe in a born again experience. No, they do not. Have I been a Mormon? I've talked to dozens of Mormons. They do not believe in a born again. They do not believe in, okay, their Bible is completely contrary to our Bible. I'm not going to sit here and debate Mormonism, but they do not believe in a born again experience. Not the way that the Bible foretells a born again experience through repentance and through the blood of Jesus Christ. Okay? They don't believe in a second coming. 
They don't believe it. And a lot of things that it contains, they don't. I'm not going to argue. No, they don't. I talked with their pastors. I know. I went. I talked to the Masons. I, their elder. I talked with the, the I quote pastor for the other people's benefit in charge of the temple in Mesa. And that, if you don't know anything about it, is one of their largest. And this is stuff that he asked me because I wanted to know. And this is the fact that he told me. I told him what we believe and I said, what do you believe? And it didn't match up. What they said that tried to make it sound that way. But then I told a direct scripture and said, do you believe it this way? And they said, no. Yeah. You know, you can get a hold of your pastor. In fact, I'm out here quite a bit talking to him. So he can contact me. Oh, okay. I'll give you our post office box real quick if you want to write it down and you can contact me. Um, give you a second here. I'll get to it before we close and I'll give it to you. Let me take another question. Yeah. No. Uh, it's just the doctrine of devil. That's the way I know how. Yeah. The healing? Well. You've never been to a Christian science. I mean, a, um, um, Spiritual Church of America had you. Christian spiritualism. They lay hands on the sick. with you. Okay? Yes. President Kennedy was a member of witchcraft, and I, I, I can't get into it today. But we've got the documentation on three months before he was killed, and the reason he was killed was because he was converted to Christ. The blonde here, right here, behind you there. Ma'am, go ahead. What was your question? Oh, a question? Okay. Yes. You should tell your mother to write him a very nasty note telling him that... Okay. She has a teacher write... Uh, she has a teacher in history. Mm. 